Given that YouTube is primarily a visual platform, my videos tend to focus on visual entertainment. However, along with film and TV, I'm also a big fan of audio dramas. I grew up listening to the long-running Christian audio series Adventures in Odyssey, produced by Focus on the Family. It was my interest in Odyssey that led me to discover Focus on the Family Radio Theatre. Well, technically it was my mum who discovered it. Since 1996, Radio Theatre has produced full-cast audio adaptations of classics such as Oliver Twist, A Christmas Carol, and The Chronicles of Narnia. However, the range also includes a number of original titles, such as The Father Gilbert Mysteries. Don't forget to give this video a like, and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. The series was released in four volumes between 2001 and 2006. There are nine mysteries in total, A Soul in Torment, Where the Heart Is, Dead Air, Healing, Secrets, The Play is the Thing, The Grey Lady, The Silver Cord, and In Memoriam. Interestingly, when the Collector's Edition was released in 2011, Dead Air was placed ahead of A Soul in Torment and Where the Heart Is. Personally, I think the original release order makes the most sense. The series centres on Father Lewis Gilbert, a former Scotland Yard detective who became an Anglican priest. Father Gilbert is the vicar of St Mark's Church in the fictional English village of Stonebridge. Radio theatre is known for its impressive casts, and the Father Gilbert Mysteries is no exception. Father Gilbert himself is played by Adrian Plass, best known for writing The Sacred Diary of Adrian Plass. While perhaps not the obvious choice, it is hard to imagine someone other than Plass being as genuine in the role. But let's get down to the real question. How in the world did you go from there to become a priest of all things? Well, I suppose I could be clever and say that being a priest is a, a lot like being a detective. We're both trying to solve the mysteries yep. of life, yep. uh, and battling the forces of evil right. and all that. Each mystery brings with it a new cast of characters. However, there are a handful besides Father Gilbert who appear throughout the series. Mrs Mayhew, voiced by June Whitfield, is Father Gilbert's assistant at St Mark's Church, and is, more often than not, an invaluable asset in his investigations. In fact, at one point the creative team considered giving Mrs Mayhew her own spin-off. When paired together, the two characters form an entertaining double act. This is St Anselm's. According to the sign it is. It's more modern than I would have expected from the name. It's awfully plain. And not everyone has the luxury of worshipping in a church like ours, Mrs Mayhew. Well, I'm not sure how anyone can worship in a box. <laughs> they probably use tambourines and guitars. Don't be such a snob. It's not snobbery, it's taste. Mrs Mayhew is never afraid to speak her mind, though she always does so in a very proper manner. Meaning no disrespect, Father, but I think you've lost your mind. Bill Drake, voiced by Bernard Cribbins, is a retired solicitor and friend of Father Gilbert's. Drake usually serves as a sounding board, offering Gilbert an outside perspective. Yes, even so... To top it off, no one has been murdered. Well, you did check. Of course I did. What else could I do after you phoned with your preposterous story? You should have heard the conversation. Hello, Chief Inspector Macaulay, Bill Drake here. Look, I was wondering if anyone's been murdered recently. Can you help? Scotsman Mr Urquhart, voiced by Gordon Reid, is the groundskeeper at St Mark's. Not to be confused with a certain other Scottish groundskeeper. The character only appears in A Soul in Torment and Where the Heart Is, as Reid passed away in 2003. However, Father Gilbert continues to mention Mr Urquhart in later mysteries. Well, we have a garden. I'm sure Mr Urquhart would be happy to have some help. Mr Urquhart? Is he married? A, a widower. <laughs> well. The only other major recurring character is George Gilbert, voiced by George Cole. But how do you know each other? Oh, we're acquaintances, that's all. Yes, that's right. He's my father. Despite their familial relationship, the two Gilberts rarely see eye to eye. No, I never said I wanted you to go away. But it's what you want. I was embarrassing to you when you were with the police. And I'm even more so now that you're a priest. I never said that. No, but you must feel it. It's not as if we've ever seen eye to eye on moral issues. Well, you mean we've never seen eye to eye on your drinking and your gambling and your philandering. That's right. Nevertheless, George's roguish charm makes him one of my favourite characters. 
While many examples of Christian entertainment can feel cheap or amateurish, Focus on the Family has over 30 years experience producing high quality audio entertainment. Behind the scenes, there was a lot of crossover between radio theatre and adventures in Odyssey. For example, Odyssey composer John Campbell also wrote the music for the Father Gilbert Mysteries. Campbell's music is an indispensable element of the series, and is instrumental in bringing the dramas to life. All nine mysteries were written and directed by Paul McCusker, who also worked on Odyssey as a writer, director, producer, and executive producer. He even lent his voice to the series on occasion, most notably as Philip Glossman. Despite being produced by an American organization, the world of the Father Gilbert mysteries feels authentically English. This is due in no small part to McCusker's own familiarity with the country, having lived there for several years. The writing even pokes fun at the differences between English and American culture. Huh. Hand me the torch, please. Torch? The flashlight. Despite the main character being an actual priest, the series isn't preachy. Faith and spirituality are obviously present in the narrative. However, they are used to tell compelling stories. Though some mysteries are more lighthearted than others, the series is generally aimed at a mature audience, exploring themes such as death, the nature of good and evil, and the supernatural. Now who is this? Who or what? Give us your name, caller. You may call me Legion. Not original, I know. But as you said, it doesn't matter what I'm called. There are many names by which I answer, but Legion will suffice for now. Legion? As in the, the French Foreign Service? Legion as in the name of a group of demons cast out by Jesus. Father Gilbert often finds himself at the centre of strange occurrences. I understand you're interested in, uh, uh, rather you're gifted, in unexplainable phenomena. Visions, <sighs> dreams, miracles, demons, that sort of thing. Well, I've, I've had a few... Uh, encounters along the way. Exactly. More often than not, the central mysteries have explanations beyond the physical. In fact, the original packaging included the tagline, Investigations of Another Kind. Father Gilbert's experience allows him to combine the deductive reasoning of a detective with the spiritual insight of a priest. And as a priest, I don't perceive people by their actions alone. I look at their hearts. I consider the state of their souls. And how do you do that? Well, by prayer, observation, yes. spiritual discernment, and experience. In other words, like a detective, you look at the clues yeah. and interpret them in the hopes that they'll lead you to the truth. Though he is devout in his faith, Father Gilbert is also open-minded. The only truly unusual aspect is that we've never had a suspect try to blame a ghost for what he's done. If he did it. You believe in ghosts, Father? I believe in the possibility of ghosts. Unlike many church leaders, he isn't afraid to ask questions, or to admit that he doesn't have all the answers. But surely the Church of England doesn't accept the reality of ghosts? I'll tell you what we in the Church of England know about ghosts. Go ahead. Not much. Now let me explain what we don't know. Uh -huh. A lot. The supernatural elements were what drew me to the series when I was younger. However, I have since grown to also appreciate the well-developed characters particularly Father Gilbert himself. His history with the Metropolitan Police is far more than a simple gimmick. Gilbert's compulsion to uncover the truth forms the basis of who he is. However, his instincts as a detective sometimes conflict with his calling as a priest. Somehow, you seem more like a detective than a priest. Yes, yes, that's what I'm afraid of. That struggle is most evident in secrets, when a close friend's life is on the line. I know you used to be a detective. Now is the time to think like one. For your friend's sake, don't play priest with this girl. I am a priest, James. I can't forget this girl has a soul, no matter what she's done. Each mystery is mostly self-contained. However, there are elements of overarching continuity. For example, Dead Air, The Plays The Thing, and In Memoriam each explore Father Gilbert's personal and family history. The final two mysteries, The Silver Cord and In Memoriam, are more closely linked though they can both be enjoyed as standalone stories. Somewhat poetically, the final mystery that Father Gilbert must solve is that of his own life. Without giving anything away, I will say that the ending of In Memoriam is rather unexpected. While it does leave the door open for more, it also functions as a satisfying finale. In 2016, 10 years after the release of In Memoriam, Paul McCusker revived the series with two original novels, The Body Under the Bridge and Death in the Shadows. 
Father Gilbert also appears in McCusker's 2004 novel, The Mill House. Unfortunately, despite the fact that fans of the audio dramas had been asking for more stories, the novels flew under most people's radar. I myself only stumbled upon them by chance. Of course, they are both still available and well worth reading. There were plans for a third novel, however these were abandoned due to the poor handling of the first two. Something McCusker expanded on when I interviewed him. I, I think, I don't know that they fully understood what they were getting into. <laughs> it's kind of the same concerns I had about Focus on the Family, which is, how are you going to market this? How are you mm. going to get this out there and will people accept it, especially in, say, an evangelical community, at least American evangelical. Sure. And uh, just more than you want to know, but truthfully, I think what happened is they were, Lion in England was partnered with a company in America that simply didn't know what to do with it. They did not know what this Father Gilbert thing was, and mm. they didn't know how to sell it. And I think they tried a few things, didn't sell. And we said, well, let's not waste our time. I don't want to write a third book that you guys don't know how to sell. So we, fin we just wrapped it up after the two. Thankfully, he also told me that he'd happily revisit the series again. You can watch my entire interview with Paul McCusker by clicking here, or by using the link in the description. Even after 20 years, the possibility of more audio dramas is still talked about. Though, sadly, June Whitfield and George Cole have both passed away. The Father Gilbert Mysteries is a uniquely entertaining, sometimes thought-provoking series that deserves wider recognition. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Let me know if you have listened to the audio dramas or read the novels. Also, if you want to hear more about the series, check out my interview with Paul McCusker. If you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Maybe share it with a friend or an enemy. Either way, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to see more content here on Channel 73.